for good. Great. Okay, calling the meeting of the Law, Rules, and Ethics Committee uh, to order. Um, we have uh, Rosemary Ginty, Sylvia Alexander, Jillian Baez, and myself as members. I don't think that gives us a quorum. Let's check. <clears throat> David will not be here, there. We need five people right. to make calls. Right. Um, so uh, let us, and welcome Marty Wolpoff, chair, coming to us from places with palm trees. Whether they're real or fake on this video, I don't know. And the chair of the board, uh, Julie Reyes, and members of the public in person, um, we have uh, Jeff Clapper and uh, zooming in uh, Belinda Hancock, um, and I think it's someone who's not identified. Oh, that's us. <laughs> oh, that's us. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, and can I think what we need to do is we're going to open the agenda so that we can scroll w. through the Word document or share screen okay, first. Yeah. Right. And then go there. Yeah. Good. I'm trying to get two thirds or three quarters of a page up. Great. Okay. So. Um, in terms of the October 2023 minutes, technically we're not going to be able to vote to approve them, but I know that all of our committee members have had a chance to take a look, and I think it was you, Jillian, who... The minutes, yeah. No, but also... Oh, right, 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 right. So um, I think we'll just vote on this next time. Um, unless there are any changes uh, to the minutes that people want to make. We have copies of them if people want to take a quick look. Uh, Rosemary, there are copies. Of it. It's a one pager, and there's some it's copies. In the oh, you agenda, got it. I think. Oh, it's in the agenda. Um, yeah. There's a small typo here at the end. There's a comma here. I don't know where, but okay, we'll, we'll fix it. We'll we'll fix, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, where, where is it? Okay. There, there's so much paper. Yeah. Okay. Tell me where the minutes. Okay. Because I read them on the screen, and I had two comments. Okay. So, so this whole thing right here is your minutes. Uh huh. At half this page and half the page. And if you prefer to see it in its original, Rosemary, there are copies over there. Is that correct? No, oh, I can make. I can. I no, didn't no, 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 throw it in there. Oh, I see. <laughs> when we, we're not going to vote on this, so vote. we can. I can wait. Okay. okay. I'm not going to take up people's time. Okay. But I did have to. Steve, who's taking minutes tonight? Good question. Uh, so far, nobody. I guess me. Um, is that you can't do two things? I can't do two things. Yeah, yeah. I'll do I'm it. Okay, yeah. that way. That's what I was gonna. That's uh, okay. I got it. Originally alternate. Okay, so we'll postpone consideration of minutes till next time. And what we have here is. Uh, Marty Wolpoff's uh, special version of an agenda, an expanded agenda, which actually has all of the text we need to be looking at. Um, so we can follow that. Thanks a lot, Farrah. Okay. And that picks up on the second page here? Yeah, it picks up on the number three report from got Chair. Got it, got it. Okay, okay so uh, Marty has gone over this. Um, a, a few times, what happened was Marty attended more than one um, New York City Civic Engagement Committee Commission presentation, and some of the things that were stated in the presentation were inconsistent with the way that Bronx Community Board 8 uh, bylaws uh, or community board rules generally across the city, the, state, the charter, um, uh, prescribe. And so Marty communicated with the appropriate people at the New York City Civic Engagement Commission, pointed out the uh, discrepancies or the departures, and if I remember correctly, Marty, correct me if I'm wrong, um, they wrote back to you and uh, agreed that they needed to change 
following points, and that's in the agenda now. Um, they, had, they had presented that abstentions are not counted toward the final vote and need not be recorded. That's not correct. Um, they had presented that subcommittees can meet in private and report back to the body for consideration of resolutions, um, and that's not the case. If it's more than one member meeting outside, technically that should be the subject of notice and minutes. Um, that more than two members. Um, and uh, it says here, uh, however, OML mandates that all sessions for which a quorum is present, I'm quite sure with that, where that goes, but um, taking of minutes is not arbitrary. Um, they must be taken mm -hmm. and approved ultimately. Um, and I think finally, um, the impression that uh, members of the board can participate at board and committee meetings via a video conference, um, and there was no mention of the new OML rules, which require in-person attendance uh, to establish a quorum. Um, and so Marty pointed out that <laughs> those rules and every community board's procedures need to be followed if people are going to attend the meeting uh, not in person. That has to be uh, permission granted for extraordinary circumstances. Um, and uh, I think that pretty much follows that, follows that out. Now, there are a couple of items that have come up recently, um, not necessarily in meetings I've attended, but questions that have arisen, which we don't have to come to conclusions about tonight, but if we haven't mentioned them before, do raise issues that ultimately the board may need our advice about. Um, one is that we have been the victims, the board and individual committees have been the victim of Zoom bombing, mm -hmm. which I was not familiar with that expression, but uh, you know, people uh, interested in, in sort of uh, either showing visuals or audio that's disruptive or offensive. Mm -hmm. And so um, it's not an issue of controlling it because there's a way to actually mute them or, or make them disappear on, on, on the Zoom. The problem is that now we have a record, since we record our minutes, now we have a record that includes uh, material which could be offensive, even if it's in addition to being disruptive. Mm -hmm. And so a question has arisen, and Marty, please um, jump in. Um, a question has arisen as to what the official record of the meeting should be and what should be posted on our website. Mm -hmm. And so um, it is the kind of thing that probably the uh, Commission on Open Meetings may want to weigh in on. Um, I have my personal view. I, I think that there's some concern over altering what is a government record, even though we're you know, not an official agency, we're treated as such under the mm -hmm. Freedom of Information Law. Um, I, you know, my suggestion would be, but I'm not the, you know, what is it, Council or Commission on Open Meetings? I'm getting cog, I'm forgetting what the C is. Um, <laughs> um, in any event. Cog so many times right. I now forget, yes. In any event, um, you know, my, my preference would be if we were given discretion, I would recommend, but we have to discuss it here. My, my reaction would be uh, what is publicly posted, if possible, edited, and make with a note that indicates that there has been material removed which could be offensive or disruptive, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. that the official recording is kept at the board office mm -hmm. and, you know, on, on our servers. There may be, just that in my own mind, there's, um, we see on the TV now um, often uh, the um, CNN, MSNBC, whatever, will say, we're, we're about to show you something. Uh, we warn you that blah, 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 and then they show it. Right. Okay, but there's a warning. Uh, and it's live, so could, people are listening. Yeah. You could, uh, what, but in, if we put the, uh, attached is the, right, uh, there, there is language and statement in here that many will find offensive, but... It, it occurred at the meeting, but we, we warn you that. Yeah. It's an option. I think that the danger there is that if you end up publicizing, because yeah. it's going to be at minute 47. You right, know right, right, right. And right, so right. if you end up, my concern is that publicizing the part which was well, the Zoom bomb encourages happen? people because now they're immortalized. Now they are mm -hmm. in a way anyway, but right. you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. 
So mm-hmm. that's why. But that's what we may need to noodle through, depending mm-hmm. on mm-hmm. what we get. But, but I, but I think, I think your point is well taken to say, it, in entire meeting, if there were Zoom bombing in that meeting, you just don't take the thing and throw it in the trash can. You can't. Right. There has to you be a way. You, you ha- there has to be a way to accommodate the public. The public has a right to know what, what occurred. Yeah. You know, the, um, uh, Steve, I think I said this at an earlier meeting, we're not the first ones to be Zoom bombed. When this first started, this is two and a half years ago, um, <coughs> community boards were, uh, were faced with this. And it, we weren't, but other community boards were. The borough president and those community boards, can't, I don't know what they did. I think it would be a good idea to talk to the borough president's office. What did you guys do with... And it was the period of Zoom because, right. it, okay, um, what, what did you guys do to um, you know, publicize but uh, cut, them, cut them out? Marty, can I impose on you and ask if uh, what steps have been taken in terms of getting some sort of guidance about what to do with that record? I was told by uh, Farah that they contact, did contact the borough president's office, and I forget whom else. But uh, they have not reported to me as to what results they had. I also drafted a letter to COG uh, last week, and uh, I have not heard anything happening with that. So uh, maybe Did Julie knows more than I do on that. But uh, Farah has the draft. Oh, so you didn't send a letter to to COG yet? No, I didn't. No, I sent, I sent a draft to Farah. Right. And I think Julie also, my draft, and suggesting that co- this could not, as, as Rosemary pointed out, this could not have been the first time this has ever happened. And therefore, they may have a track record on what they recommend. But uh, as far as I know, my letter has not been duplicated or forwarded. Okay, we'll follow up on that. Um We've already, uh, oh, the, another subject which has been raised by Marty at these meetings, um, I don't know whether we intend to come to ground on this or not, but the question was raised about asking members who abstain at board meeting votes um, the, why they're, the reason for their abstention. Mm-hmm. And this is to be distinguished from what is correctly termed present but ineligible to vote, that's always appropriate to ask what the basis mm-hmm. for the conflict is. Mm-hmm. There's no compulsion that it be revealed, but it is something that can be asked about. Um, this is the, the issue that comes up because abstentions under the city charter, I think, um, do count as a vote, which makes it harder for a particular piece of business to be approved, to mm-hmm. pass. And so uh, what, what I've seen all too often in my 10 plus years on the board is that Sometimes when a matter is either somewhat emotional or difficult or challenging, you'll start to see, you know, 10 or more people Mm -hmm. abstain. And sometimes I think, I will say based on my own life experience, I think sometimes, you know, the reason is that people simply can't decide and they feel like that's okay to just say, I'm a draw. Mm -hmm. I don't think it is. I know other people don't think Mm -hmm. it is. You agree to be on the community board, you agree to, to vote, to take a position. Um, another t- and, and there are other reasons for it. I wasn't paying attention. Sometimes people say, I don't know enough about the issue to vote. Mm-hmm. Again, it's, you know, you, you're, you're given the information you, you're given. I'm not saying there's never an op- a situation, but those are frequent, I think, reasons why people abstain. And then the fourth reason, again, you know, not ideal, is that sometimes people don't want to cross other members who are voting, you know, mm-hmm. yes or no, and they just, they don't want to. Mm-hmm. And again, you, you've agreed to sign on to be a voter here, mm-hmm. and so that shouldn't work. So the question is, you know, as a matter of suasion, S-U-A-S-I-O-N, a way of persuading people to sort of not abstain very much or as much, what's the best way to approach it? If you, if you stop a board meeting and you ask 15 people for their reasons, mm-hmm. it seems quite disruptive mm-hmm. and, and time-consuming. And inappropriate. So, yeah, well, that's the thing. I mean, is it or isn't it? Um, I think probably where I come out is that it would probably be okay for the chair of the board, and maybe Julie, you may want to weigh in, although I don't see Julie's thumbnail, so you may be satisfied that we are okay. But 
what I was going to say is that it could conceivably be a statement by the chair at the beginning of mm -hmm. however many meetings the chair wants to do it. Mm -hmm. And just it doesn't have to take a very long time. It can be a two-minute homily right. um, and just exp explain the issue, the problem, and urge people that, mm -hmm. you know, except in extraordinary circumstances, I shouldn't use that word because it now means something else, but except in unusual mm -hmm. situations, they should not abstain. Um, uh, the chair um, did, a, um, what do I say, a meeting at Downey's. Do you remember when when she put this meeting? Which, were you there, Jim? I did not I attend. Not, I, I, I wasn't well, but she did it, like okay. at the end of October. She did it, and um, she asked me to, uh, she took a half hour for a number of board members to, we were given two minutes to speak, three minutes. That's it. Two, three minutes. What's your experience of 15 years being on the board? I have three minutes. I spoke. This is what I said, and this is what should be said before meeting. Three things you have to remember. Understand the rules. Your obligation to understand the rules. What does, what, what's a resolution? How do you amend a resolution? How does, what, what is tabling? What is it? Learn them, and what you don't know, ask. Number two, you have an obligation to know the issue. Know what the issue is. If it's in your committee, you're, you're sitting in that committee. Ask every question about if it is a resolution that comes from another committee, you have an obligation to read that resolution. If you don't understand it, ask. And then number three, vote. And don't be afraid. Do not be afraid to be the only person who votes no. And do not be afraid to be the only person who votes yes. I said those three things in two minutes. That should be, and, and whatever. I got applause. So there you go. <laughs> but that, that's, that's it in essence. You can't hold a gun to somebody's sentence and say, you can't abstain. You can abstain. Right. But that's not the issue, right? You've got to know the rules. You've got to know the issue and vote. And don't be afraid to. That, that, the, the third one goes to your issue of, I may offend somebody if I vote no. It's no, or there I'm is not, no or offense. they're related to the other issues. I'm not right, paying right. attention. I'm not right, knowledgeable. Right. Yeah. I, I, I would be personally in favor, and this is not something the committee necessarily has to vote on, but um, or we could make a recommendation. We don't have a quorum, so we're not going to take mm -hmm. action tonight. We're talking. But I would, I, I mean, I, I would be fine just as a member of the committee. I would be fine making a recommendation to Julie that as to that third point, she for a couple of meetings well, address it. That's you know. Mm -hmm. Marty has his hand up. The, yes, the comment I made at the same yeah. meeting. The comment I made at that same meeting is that that people who are on the board should take their role seriously because obviously friends are going to ask, I read about X issue, well, how did you vote? What's going on? Give me some detail. And if you don't know, you're not being an effective member on the board. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's right, Marty. You were there. Marty gave a presentation at the, at the main meeting. Yeah. Okay. So that, I'm sorry. No, I just was going to say, I think it's a good idea because other spaces, abstaining may not hold as much weight as it does here. Mm -hmm. And so folks need to hear why abstaining is not okay. Except in extreme circumstances. Right. There is a time and a place for it. It's but, allowed. But yes, but generally, for the reasons that Steve laid out, those are not good reasons to have seen. Mm -hmm. Oh, Julie has her hands up as well. Oh, great. I, no, I was just listening to the, I was okay. listening to the conversation and I totally agree uh, with everything that's being said in regards to the abstentions um, that we should hold people accountable and when Rosemary and Marty when you both spoke about it the orientation, um, I believe the new members and hopefully those who have been on the board um, listened because it is important we have a lot of important issues that are coming up to the board soon and a lot of them will be touchy but we need to like rosemary said you know learn about what's going on and know the issues and vote i agree wholeheartedly and steve your suggestion of, of saying something at the start of a meeting or maybe before the, the committee reports when we're taking resolutions and voting um i would I will look to make some sort of statement as suggested. I think it's a good idea. Okay, I don't know if that needs to be an official recommendation voted on by the 
because no, it doesn't. Up being a resolution. No, <laughs> it, it doesn't. It doesn't need to be. Consent, you know. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's, okay. it's an advisement that I listen to and I consent, and I'm going to pill for some of Rosemary's speech. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. It, was, it really was two and a half. Months. Did you write it down? <laughs> no, it's, it's up here. I know. <laughs> um, the next item that uh, Marty had listed on our internal agenda was um, about definitions of disability under the uh, two different definitions of disability under the ADA, the Americans mm -hmm. with Disabilities Act, and the New York City Human Rights Commission law. Um, and they're, they're shown on the agenda and up on the screen with the two bullets. The first is the ADA, the second is the New York City Human Rights Commission. Um, the reason that this is here, or that Marty raised the issue, um, is that there, I believe, if the law hasn't changed, but it may have, I think that the, um, statute is now makes clear that um, disability is a ground for joining a meeting which otherwise one is required to attend in person uh, even if you don't have an exceptional circumstance if that's the only way that you can get to a meeting as a result of disability it's quite different than an exceptional circumstance because disabilities tend to be well, that was two people yeah two people on my committee my right think my I'm sorry Go on, Marty. My thinking here is that a little later on, we're going to talk about the whole idea of extraordinary circumstances. And will we have to, do we want to modify the procedures? If we do, we need to think about and add this new part of the OML, which says that people who have disabilities have the, um, uh, have the, I <clears throat> can be counted as part of the quorum. So as we define what we want to write or not write in procedures, I thought it's important for us to know what the laws are. Uh, COG has not been helpful in this at all. COG raised its hands and said, go based on the law, but we give us, give us no interpretation and no definition. So we want to have this in mind, that's all. Right. No, I think if, if we come out with new procedures and, and even if we scrap some of the procedures we have, this, I think, needs to be addressed. I think it's good fortune that there are definitions that are pretty close and that we don't have to reinvent the wheel on that. Um, there's always going to be discretion. There is for any employer who makes an accommodation, you know, mm -hmm. um, but, uh, but it's, it's, it should be part of the guidance. Um, no, I think... Um, th th this committee works very hard and struggles through the the wording of the law and cog and all. Um, we can we can come to a conclusion. I, I don't think we community board A should be sitting there alone in a, an independent determination. It really, it, where is the borough president on this? Where is the corporation council? We should get assistance in this instead of creating it all ourselves. We can, it, it, we're can we smart enough to go through this and we think this is what it should be, but you know, where, where are the, the, um, the, the city governing bodies that should, should have a, should put forward a consistent approach? Well, they to have actually. Is it, have they? Oh, yeah, right. That's where this comes from. Marty was not just no, but this is a law. Right. No, no, no. But Marty, can you just real, real briefly okay. explain that a change has been made to the statute? Yes. A new amendment, uh, which caught us by surprise a month and a half ago, is that this new addition that someone, <laughs> they refused to respond for the last two and a half years as to what ADA impact was on OML. But I would, we were surprised to learn from COG that uh, the recent uh, um, amendment to the law allows people with disabilities to be counted as part of the quorum. And uh, it refers us to the law, the specific law, which defines disabilities. And I shared that last month, and I can get it back for you. Uh, I just wanted no, no. to. So, if I can interrupt, just to answer Rosemary's question, we're not inventing any wheel where this is concerned. We're not and inventing at all. Community board to just have its own list of procedures. We're just making sure that the procedures are not incomplete, that they reflect this change in the law. That's and it. Cog, Cog said it's up to 
it, Cog said in that meeting, if someone says I have a disability, we're supposed to accept that as face value. My sense here is that we ought to at least have some definition so that people who might ask for it know what's expected. Okay, so basically the summary is there's been a change in the law and we want to reflect this in any new procedures we put together. That's all. Those are procedures we're already commanded to develop on a community board level. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm now going to number four on the agenda. Reactions to the distributed primer, if any. Um, didn't ask for any, did we? Right. No. We put it out there, and there you go. Okay. Okay. Um, well, Marty, do you want to just give us a little color on this, on number four? Well, in, in, in preparing for my presentation for the new members, and reading it and reading it and reading it, I realized there were things that were missing. So at some point, if we chose, if we choose to amend it for next year, I'm not suggesting at all for this year, these are at least four new items that need to be included somewhere. Maybe members of the board uh, of the committee, after considering it as I did, have a few more we should be adding. That's all. It's a heads up. Yeah, I forgot. My bad, I forgot. No, that's exactly what this is. Um, it was the primer, right? Number five, survey the implementation of extraordinary circumstances. So I have actually, for the benefit of, uh, it's actually reprinted here. In Marty has embedded it in the agenda, but for people who are in person, I've handed out. Um, copies in paper, if that's easier, because it's hard to see things all very much on one screen. And just real quick, really quickly walking through this structurally, um, the idea is to get to collect the experiences of chairs of different committees to see how they have uh, experience, how, how, what has their experience been with requests for um, approval of extraordinary circumstances um, which again allows people to uh, join a meeting they would normally be required to attend in person uh, in order to discuss and vote <clears throat> uh, allows them to zoom in. They won't count for, as a quorum, but they will be in attendance. They won't be absent and they will get to vote. Um, so what this is primarily drafted, um, certainly the first page, by Marty, um, this would be probably handed to or emailed to all the chairs on the board to see what their experience has been in September, October, and November. Um, and to that end, there is a, uh, a form to collect their experience, which is the next page after the introductory letter. And for better or worse, this will give people a little bit of a structure to report on what their experience has been. If they've gotten 30 requests, this is going to be cumbersome. <laughs> But if they've gotten a handful, uh, the ones they can recall, they'll be able to give us a sense of what the reasons have been that people have given, uh, what their actions have been in terms of approving or disapproving, um, and what kinds of numbers we're looking at. Mm -hmm. and that's the point of the form. Now, everybody understands this document is public information, right? This is, there's nothing confidential here. No, people are not going to, at least I, I think it says it, if it doesn't, it should, um, that it's not necessary or it is, one is not supposed to be putting down the name of the person who made the request, just the numbers. Mm -hmm. I'll take another look at this to make sure that that is what is the... That was the intent. The, yeah, the minutes... Without identifying the persons. It's mm -hmm. there. It's mm -hmm. there, Marty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. It is unblemished. The minutes of each committee meeting identifies who uh, we have decided and we're, we're not asking publicly why. This doesn't connect names to people, just want to know right, what the right. reasons being used are. Right. And then the second part of the survey or questionnaire is literally sort of thought questions that we want either yes and no answers to <clears throat> or what people's you know views are. and. They, they run the gamut 
of, you know, did people who were granted EC, did they actually show up on Zoom? That kind of thing. Has that been their experience? And then just forward-looking questions. Do you believe that we should have an EC category that is up to each chair to make a decision about? Um, smaller sub-questions, but, but uh, then the last few questions uh, really ask in what direction the board should go. And this is on the assumption that we're going to come out with a, a revised list of procedures. And it could be something drastic. It could be not just tweaking things. It could be deciding that it's more work than it's, than it's worth and we're not going to have EC anymore. This has nothing to do with disability. That's a separate uh -huh. issue. Uh -huh. um, and so some of these questions, uh, you know, get into more detail about possible directions to go. This only goes, the intention is this only goes to the chairs of the committees. That's right. it. Right. Okay. So just, just when there are, should we go forward with it? Should, like, opinion pieces? The vote eventually will be the whole board. Right. Okay. So well, it's a three-part process. Okay. First, we're gathering data, mm -hmm. including responses to mm -hmm. the questionnaires. Mm -hmm. Secondly, um, the, the LRE is going to do what we did last time, and then cash out a, a new list of procedures or a, an overarching recommendation that we go a different direction, and then that'll go before the board. And the board, right? Okay. Uh, Marty, do you have anything to add? No, I think you covered it well. I just want to thank you and Jillian for uh, your input in, uh, in reformulating and adding materials. So thank you to both of you. So, so both of these pieces, the first, the number piece and the, we'll call the opinion piece, I don't, whatever you want to call that right. second piece, um, uh, they're not anonymous. Our names will be on them. The chair's names will and be on them. That, that's yeah. the, and, and therefore, they're subject to disclosure. That's so everybody understands. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I think if, yeah, I mean, I don't. It didn't occur to me that answers to these questions would be of a controversial nature in the sense that people can always disagree, but it's, mm -hmm. not, mm -hmm. it's, not, a, it's not that kind of a topic. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. uh, it strikes me it strikes me that we're just going to collate the data, decide uh, what information is of value, and we will publish generically responses, but uh, not assign names to anybody. We'll see. Let's see what we get. We don't know what the inputs are going to be. <clears throat> um, but anyway, just in some of the choices for the future, um, one is to get a more detailed list of what characteristics would constitute EC, extraordinary circumstances. That would be going in the direction of more detail to mm -hmm. give perhaps chairs more guidance. I think that may be a, a, a difficult thing to do, but nevertheless. Uh, the other direction you can go is to just forget about it. People are in person just like the old days. <laughs> you come in person, you're, you're part of the quorum, you can participate. Keep in mind, and this is something that's a little bit subtle, this doesn't mean that if you can't make it to a meeting, but you can zoom in, that you have to miss the, what goes on at the meeting. Mm -hmm. You can continue to be a good committee member and mm -hmm. stay abreast, like if you're traveling on a purely, you know, whatever, work or fun, vacation. Mm -hmm. um, you can keep, you know, in fact, and if it's open to members of the public to participate, some committee meetings are, some are not, depends mm -hmm. on the logistics. You can also, you know, participate. You just can't vote, and you're marked absent. Mm -hmm. That's all. Mm -hmm. Another possibility is to say, you know what, it's just not worth people's time as chairs to have to be getting these phone calls and making the decision mm -hmm. and responding mm -hmm. by email. Let's just give everybody two free passes. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know if that's completely consistent with the statute, but mm -hmm. to just take some of the effort and the, wor the work mm -hmm. out of it, um, save any feelings, that kind of thing. So anyway, that's just... Just an idea. Some this, ideas. this is the the whole issue of the hybrid meetings is coming up again in the spring. Is that automatic, or did the last time we, we voted, know. didn't we say in one year we're going to revisit? This is what I'm. I believe I believe it was that. It wasn't so much that there's anything in the law, but that our resolution said that, that. revisit every will revisit something. everything in a year or so. Well, it sounds right? like it's going to be the spring, like May. Right, right, right. right. And, we, and, and we, so this, and this is geared toward uh, uh, meeting that deadline. Right. Okay. okay. As noted Sorry, last year, 
there are two parts of the law require making requirements of us. One is to have the public resolution, which we passed, and uh, that resolution calls upon us to review it every year or six months. I forget what. I think it comes up in May. The second part was the procedures. There's no revote on that unless we amend it. And I think we decided that, that that the procedures would be voted on. That was an open question. Mm -hmm. If Does amended, there's no reason to vote it. There's no reason to renew no, it. Oh, okay. Well, we have time to get to that bridge. Um, okay. Uh, the next item I think that we have not covered is number seven on Marty's agenda, which is uh, best methods to publicize the code of conduct which we've discovered is contained in identical language, both in the forward and introduction of the bylaws and, no surprise, uh, Irving Marty and, and uh, Rosemary's ethical guidance manual in the introduction. So uh, this is number seven in purple, if you're following the paper on the screen. Mm -hmm. And the question is, um, what do we do with this? Because I think this is a little bit like apple pie. And there's, you know, there's no disagreeing with the sentiment expressed. We certainly had a rough year last year, as, as civility goes, I think people feel that way. And so um, how best to deal with this? People have suggested things ranging from put the words on our, all of our public letterhead, you know, um, like, a, like a motto. Um, it's also been suggested that it be read very short the beginning of every board meeting, the chair, another officer. Um, it, again, it's very, very small number of words. I think it's something which is a good idea to to remind people of, but I don't know what, what the view is. This may also be the kind of thing that isn't the subject of a formal resolution, but rather just, you know, something that we mentioned to Julie uh, or the other officers. Any views? I know we've discussed it briefly. We discussed before. it often. <laughs> <laughs> well, the words, that we've now like zoned in, zoomed, That's whatever, true. honed That's in true. on the words. We're not That's out in the, in the ether anymore. So. so the question is, what do you do with the right. words? Mm -hmm. okay. Right. It, it, an answer to meeting, we, the decision is that they are, they hear the words and they're in the ethical guidance bank and that's it, or repeat it every month. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Do something else with it. Put it on a cup, a mug. <laughs> uh, um, so we don't have a quorum. So maybe we wait till we have a quorum and then we make a, an informal. We vote on an informal recommendation. Mm -hmm. It'll be in our minutes. It may not be the subject of a board vote because it doesn't seem appropriate for that. Um, the identifying topics the committee would like a COIB representative to discuss at a future meeting. So COIB, Conflict of, Inter of Interest Board, are there issues that we think we would like further guidance on? Because most committees get, have guests who address them, you know, from appropriate agencies and the like. We don't, we have not done that a lot in the last couple of years. Um, so this is an obvious guest <laughs> for the show. And the question is, are there subjects we'd like them to address? Again, have, conflicts of interest, you know, will range from a basis for abstaining, you know, present ineligible to vote, all the way to, you know, using government resources to run a private business, which can get you censured, fined, fired, you know. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I don't know. Offhand, I don't have any, any issues, but I also haven't made myself think about it. My contact Anybody? at COIB, who I've referred to a number of times, when I was last in contact with him, and I'll mention it why, um, I asked him whether he'd be willing uh, to speak to us again. And he said, yes, tell him what and when, and he, he's more than happy to do so. And I think he's been invaluable the last two times he participated. The reason I contacted him this time, and I've mentioned it a number of times, was my concern that an issue being raised at tomorrow's community board meeting is over 1099, a uh, uh, an item introduced before the city council concerning the changeover for uh, retired members, retired city employees, 
uh, to have their health cha care changed. And I wondered whether or not the fact that I am a retired uh, city employee who would benefit if 1099 were enacted uh, by the city council, I would benefit. Does that create a conflict of interest to prevent me to vote? And I have it in writing from them that I am entitled to vote. So I raise again the issue, if anyone thinks they have a conflict, if it's not that personal, discuss it with me. If I do not have a reasonable answer based on the kind of stuff that's coming up uh, each month we read from them, then I will direct them to COIB, as I did. So again, this is, this is just a question of food for thought. If there are things that are coming up that people want uh, guidance about. Um, when the when the when that uh, Helen, I forget his name. Morty, what was the guy's name again? Alex, he was Alexander Kip. That's it, Kip. Alexander Kip. Yeah. Um, uh, he was a wonderful, engaging presenter. Um, it, to me, it's a, what the message he has to deliver is something that probably. Um, we should entertain, I'm making this up, once every three years or something. It's not, you don't need it every year um, because the questions are, I hate to say generic, they're not generic, but they're eternal issues that, that confront people. And it's, it's probably the new board members need it more than anybody, but it's always a good reminder for everybody what, what, what those issues are. I just would add that they have to say also should be given to the office staff because it, we keep focusing on the board members. It, it, it has a dual purpose, and uh, I've never seen a presentation just for it might be it might be something worthwhile. Considering. I thought that what was on the table was actually a visit to the committee, which is even more limited. So I wasn't. Marty, my understanding was that this was just a guest for the committee. We weren't trying to build in, though it sounds like a good idea, a lecture to the full board. Every few years. Well, it certainly could be, but my, it could be, but my intent was to have Alex uh, zoom in with us and talk to us at the committee. Well, maybe you can do that in the first instance, and maybe you can just Advertise. give him the choice of what he wants to cover. I'm afraid that the attendance would might be too slim on a given, but mm -hmm. he, if he zoomed in, for example, to a community board meeting and the chair of the board agreed we could devote 15 minutes to it, but you'd get your audience. But you know, well, with Zoom now, it could be advertised. Oh, we just highly like, recommend that you attend and listen. If you don't, it is up there. I highly recommend I that see. you uh, uh, click in and listen to it. It was a lot of good information. That kind of Okay. That kind of thing. That's kind of what was in my head. But I, I think it, 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 one should consider going beyond community board members. No, I hear you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We should think about that. But the issue I, I thought, and it's totally my thought, is that the exchange between Alex and us was a valuable learning experience for this committee, not necessarily a presentation. Both can be done different topics, so if he, you know, just speaks to, uh, like the issue we had a couple of years ago, um, when we wanted, <laughs> definitely wanted to be, have some input into the city charter uh, amendment uh, for term limits, and we were barred from doing so, or the involvement in political activities. That, those discussions took place with LRE. But those are wide enough, for example, for which the entire board should be listening to. Well, Marty, if I can make a suggestion, I, I suggest that you invite uh, Kip to whatever meeting, upcoming meeting is convenient for him. You know, maybe something other than December, just because that's people are less available, <clears throat> and he may be too. Um, and and start and, and make one of the one of the questions for him. What does he think would be the most valuable subjects to cover if we arrange for him to have a half hour mm -hmm. of, of, of time with an audience of the mm -hmm. community board and staff members, um, presumably on an evening when there's no conflict with other board business? No. 
in the no problem. In the past, I have the letter I've written to him saying we'd like you to discuss X, Y, and Z because we have questions. But it doesn't have to be December or January. After we've thought thought about it and have some ideas, Alex, uh, I'll contact him. No problem at all. Yeah, I mean, I think you can ask him to, to suggest, put it on his calendar for one of our meetings if we know the date in January or February. And, uh, you know, we'll get in touch with him well in advance to give him some feedback, including the idea of whether he thinks it's a good idea and can be effective to address the board. Mm -hmm. In the next couple of days, I'll send off a letter. Great. Um, Marty, again, has helpfully uh, inserted, I think it's the last couple of examples uh, of recent publicized actions by the COIB in the uh, enforcement and punishment area. Um, so I, you know, I, I remember reading this, but it's been a while. Um, and uh, I'm rarely su surprised, well, I guess I'm often surprised by the leniency of the penalties. <laughs> But um, they don't usually seem to be gray areas. It's a hundred percent employees, as opposed to. Well, I think a large now, part of that. We're not. There have been. Expected. There have been board members who've been chastised and uh, followed up on. It was board eight in the Manhattan where I followed up and couldn't understand the logic they were using until Alex explained it to me and explained it to all of us. It was a member who was had a conflict of interest. And even though she had the authority and right to do the, the three Ds, she began being an advocate rather than be just a, uh, someone who's speaking at a board meeting. And they find her. Right. No, I mean, the things that certainly come to mind are land use and approvals of liquor licenses and other sorts of, well, I guess, land use, like siting, home, group homes, things like that. That's where it would seem to be, you know, kind of come up most easily for us. And I think there are gray areas there. Um, and just uh, finishing out uh, the New York City Council legislative spreadsheet, Marty has, has been good enough to continue to color code this so that each of our representatives is assigned a different color and you can <laughs> scroll through very easily um, without doing the sorting yourself. So thank you again for that, Marty. Um, and before we talk about our next meeting schedule, any new business? Any suggestions for our next agenda? Um, Marty has looked ahead, and the next month, the next second Monday of a month is Monday, December 11th. These things can change, I guess, but I don't think the calendar is set for the next month. Um, it's been a while since I've been a chair, but uh, it, it looks like Monday, December 11th is worth putting in your calendar. Before you adjourn, I want to thank Steve. Uh, for chairing this meeting. My family thanks you since I'm down here. And, uh, so, Steve, thank you. With, Marty, with your, with your embedded agenda, it's really more like reading somebody's lines. <laughs> Good meeting. Um, just everybody. a thought. Uh, just a thought. Yeah. There was one of, the, one of the questions in the questionnaire uh, was whether or not a chair has the authority to grant themselves EC status. I have chosen not to do that. There's no rule that says I couldn't have, but uh, Julie is gracious enough to grant me that status for tomorrow night. But um, so I, I thank Julie and I, it's a question and I think worth consideration. That's all. And thank you it's from Florida. Yeah. When when will the questionnaire go out? When is 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 there anything holding it up at this point? There shouldn't be anything holding. Well, it we up. want people to have the experience of November, since that's one of the months covered. So okay. I don't think it makes sense to send it out until so, so, the end of the month. Okay, yeah. got it. Okay. Um, and then I guess if some people 
Um, I, I mean, it seems like the committee is okay with this. People have seen it a few times, so mm -hmm. we can even, you know, Sylvia, you can take your copy with you. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe the December executive committee meeting, it could be, Morty could introduce it because it's the, it's the executive committee are really the... The people, the people being people questioned. Are going to receive it. So right. maybe that executive committee in December yeah. would. Yeah, okay. That's a good commercial. Okay. Now, whether people are going to be able to comply with December 8th if they get this the week after Thanksgiving, no, but it's not important. We just need to have the results. Don't tell anyone I said that, but mm -hmm. even though this is being recorded, but as long as we have the results in hand so we can make a recommendation mm -hmm. after the mm -hmm. new year, that's mm -hmm. really the idea. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's a good suggestion about the, ne the next, I guess it would be the December exec. Commercial for the survey. Right? Yeah. Okay. Well, with that, I think. Uh, Motion to adjourn. Granted, and I, as I now, as I now know from reading one of those printers <coughs> that went around, things like minutes and adjournments may not even need motions. <laughs> um, okay. Well, thanks everybody, and you can hit stop record. Thank you, Steve. Mark